What do you think? I mean, we're at a time now where poverty's on the rise. You know, the New York Times just ran an article about people living in their cars. Mm. Food is higher. Gas is higher. You know, it seems like... I just like- spent $9 on a bag of oranges, <laughs> and I'm still irate about that. And it's been four days since this. <laughs> mm. I'm still tight. So, you know- like, how do we... how? Is there a justification for this? At times like this, I look to the late great order, Tupac Shakur. <laughs> what did he say? said they yeah. have money for wars, but not to feed the poor. A thousand percent. Mm. Our government is literally spending billions of dollars to create violence and chaos across the globe. True. When they could literally be like, you know what? We're going to probably just invest in some folks. Yes. Cancel mm. some debt. Yes. You know, uh, cancel some loans. Yes. Give people opportunities to to grow groceries, to have you know Medicare for all, yes. To to basically maybe de radicalize folks because if people are are happy, healthy, not sick and fed, yes. Maybe they don't want to create violence. Maybe maybe they they love life and and want to live more life and and want to have dialogues, yes. But instead, he's like. We got a little war here, a little war there, a little bomb here, yes. a little strike there. And it is really ridiculous because when we ask for things such as cannabis legalization or student loan forgiveness, the Voters first rights. thing mm-hmm. we hear is how are you going to afford it? A thousand percent. Who's Come going on, to pay for it? Yes. What what taxes are going to be raised? But when it's war, it's like money just falls out the sky, grows mm. from the trees, sprouts in the grass. Mm. Like no one questions how we can have billions of dollars yeah. to create war. But when we're like, hey, we want to do free lunch for students. Come on. Free breakfast. Mm. Come on, Miracle. It's like, who's going to pay for it? Where's sure. the money going? We're a socialist society. We're a communist society. But when we want to kill people, particularly yeah. black and brown people, yes. oh, we have money for that. And oh, that definitely. really is, it's, why, it's wild to me because a lot of us were like, hey, we do marijuana legalization. That is billions of dollars that we can use to stimulate the economy. We can bring people home. We can yeah. give them jobs. That was too far-fetched. That was like a no. We were like, okay, well, maybe we can do some tech stuff. No, we don't want to do that. But we want to create industries solely to take life. If I could just drop something in right now. Please do. Go ahead, my brother. Uh, Our illustrious production team and our head, Jack, sent me something. He said that according to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, it would cost $20 billion to end homelessness in the United States. Wow. Wow. And then... The department estimates that one-time student debt relief, student debt relief will cost an average of $30 billion a year over the next decade. Wow. So, again, that's $50 billion where, like Miracle said, you we, can don't solve have, the problems we don't have any America. homelessness. <laughs> we don't have homelessness. We don't have debt. Right? We can... You know what you that know, sounds like? A socialist society. <laughs> <laughs> A socialist utopia <laughs> where everybody gets Taco Bell and that's the only restaurant. Left. If anybody catches that movie reference, I'll be surprised. But I think like the, the piece is. It was, it was Demolition Man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Demolition Man. What? Are you, did you like. <laughs> I almost said something inappropriate. All right, we're going to keep it moving. What? I don't know what he you. woke up on the futon. Drank like and ate this morning. Yes. Today I just I'm gonna just be all over the place. Right? <laughs> Is that, I'm gonna be as obscure as possible in any and all of my references. Um, you made a great point, uh, Treble. You are the youngest, right? Yes. This is kind of like your future mm-hmm. being mortgaged, like Miracle said, to just create more bomb. And it's like not only is it being mortgaged in terms of money, mm-hmm. but a, a great point that you made, Miracle. You're creating more enemies worldwide now Mm -hmm. so like because we're you know we're exporting war and violence and death and harm yeah you actually end up creating more enemies for the united states like i just how did you feel as as a young person navigating this like um this so i'm reading a book as we speak called the I think he's refuting the the um 
he's basically refuting statism, right? Yes. Our stance in statism, our belief in statism. Yes. It almost sounded like you were saying Satanism, but. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no, State- no, not at all. Statism. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I am like, as I see the numbers and where the U.S. is investing billions of dollars. Yes. I'm realizing like, okay, we live in a state that doesn't value our life. A thousand that doesn't percent. value its own economy because these same billions could actually help boost the economy if they invested it in their actual citizens. But instead they want to invest it in killing people, building a walls to separate people on the border. Um, and it's just like, okay, it's showing me exactly where this country stands. Because we always advocate for the conditions of liberation, but it seems our government is always for the conditions of violence and creates those those barriers, creates the ignorant, ignorance and the hatred, creates all of the isms. And then instead of being like, hey, here's the solution, it's like the solution is like get a gun because you're afraid of your neighbor True. or mm-hmm. buy, <laughs> buy this, you know, operating system this, you know, Fear surveillance system, this alarm system, yeah. because you're worried about something else, whether it's, you know, people being outside or people playing music or people who look different than you. When it's like, you know, we could all just have like a very simple, happy life. Like, I True. don't understand why people don't see the value in just letting people be in peace. Like, I don't get that because... Mm-hmm whether it's how we engage in the UN or our our policies or even like our domestic policies, a lot of the violence you find out it's, it's state sponsored. Absolutely. And Mm -hmm. whether it's our failing education system that the state has like destroyed or just our ability to talk to each other. Like we don't know how to talk to each other. We don't know how to engage each other. And that is why a lot of these state actors are able to kind of move us as chess pieces yeah. against each other. It rem- mm-hmm. I remember that um, you mentioned education. I remember, I forget what school, but it was like the school had like a tank. Like a like a tank for like protection or oh, that enforcement. Was, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, I don't know if it was San Diego or some someplace like that. That was, uh... but um, it's like we could just buy books and. Desk oh. computers for the students. Well, that just sounds like socialism. <laughs> but, we're, but we're gonna buy this tank, and it's just it's just that that mentality. So, mm-hmm. company, I found a book, by the way. What's the book? It's a case against the state by Tanner Cook. Yes, it's a really good book. Uh, thank it you. It was for that. San Diego, right? So, yeah. coming to you, miracle, because in light of this, in light of um, what a lot of people thought was Joe Biden's, you know, unequivocal support of Israel in the face of what, you know, many people felt like uh, was overreaching, to say the least, you know, war crimes, to say the most, when it comes to how, you know, Israel is dealing with Gaza and the West Bank right now. Um, You know, I've read, for instance, like in Michigan, people were saying, like, they're not going to vote again. Does this spell, like, doom for Joe Biden? Um, will, will, Will you be able to... In 2024, like, say to somebody, hey, we should vote for <laughs> Hey, y'all. I, I, I'm, I'm, is it, I'm like, wrestling is this it? right now. Is it, I'm, like, is this I'm, it? I'm, I'm wrestling like, right now. Yes. Um, we're thinking about, like, is it is there enough time to get another candidate? If there's another right. candidate, who is it going to be? Right. Because all the third-party candidates, you know, yeah. Love y'all, but y'all are not it. Um, <laughs> and so th- there's real ongoing conversations yes. of do we support this upcoming, you know, administration? Right. Do we then, do we instead just support the local? I, I honestly don't know because a lot of people are also talking about how this makes Biden seem so presidential and war is good for the Democrats. True. True. And so there's so many conversations going on and I don't think people are really focused on people's lives. So I don't have an answer right now about what, what we should do in 2024 because we only have really right now two options. True. Um, True. And that is the problem. And so people, there is a pattern or practice of people withholding their vote because of the way international policy is upheld. And I, I can't tell people not to do it because if the answer 
if the the only reason not to vote to withhold your vote is well you could die well people are dying right now true and so you're going to have to give people something to vote for you're going to have to have a better policy and i'm hopeful that after these upcoming days we'll see a switch in this administration because i don't think that people are going to be able to withstand a year of a war and that is what the israeli government is saying that this this it may last over a year. Right. And I mean, I think we're <clears throat> beyond a year in Ukraine um, in terms of what's happening there. So, no, you're, I think you're, I, and I, one, I just want to say thank you for being honest um, because it is that struggle right now, uh, particularly because, I mean, like, you look at the alternative. I mean, the Republican Party is like in a free fall right now where you can't even get a Speaker of the House, you mm. know, like, um, Basically, you know, Trump's not even debating and really questioning why they should have a debate at the same time as 91 felonies. None of the other Republicans running for election have made any type of separation from the others. Um, and so it is, it's like, where do we go, particularly in, in, the, in the national scope right now? It's like, where do we go when you have, you know, obviously we don't want like more war, like we've been clear in terms of where we think investment should be going to. And it's like, but you're, you're right in the sense if it's a system that only has two really real choices. So like, where do we go and how do we move? Uh, to me, obviously we should be involved locally. Mm. Um, I think that's a whole different conversation, yeah. <clears throat> but it is fascinating. I think when you look at uh, the national picture and say like, okay, is he, trying to become like the center candidate in order to maybe get some of these people from the Republican party. And just to Farouk's uh, initial point, like when are our issues addressed? Mm-hmm. Like, and when I say specifically our issues, I mean, I'm, you know, as a black American, I'm, I'm talking about specifically like our communities, like when is that investment going to happen? When are we going to see something as clear as you know, his, your statements around Ukraine, your statements around Israel, and, like, those statements now are being followed up by billions of dollars. Right. Mm. Which makes it realer, right? It's one thing to say, y'all support you. Yeah, 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 I support you. It's another thing that I support you, and here's billions of dollars. Yeah. Right? I, what, what would a billion-dollar investment in the black, in, in black people in the black community look like from Congress? Right? I think that's the question. Like, what would that look like? 